Okay, first question uh, is something that's kind of like a universal question, but what changes would you make to the Constitution and how would you go about changing it? Uh, first off, you know, everybody up here is going to say the same thing. Uh, we want separation of powers. There's seven people. There's seven people making a lot of decisions for 14,000 and that just doesn't work out. We need to add more members. You know, there's there's all kinds of things. That's a very, very big document. And, you know, it's really hard to even go into in two minutes, I'm sure. These guys will have a little more insight than me on it. But right now we have a constitutional revision that happened in 2006 that uh, MHA Nation Tomorrow has. And my first step would be to continue working on that constitutional revision and then bring it to the people and let you guys read through it and you guys vote on it. It shouldn't be seven people deciding your constitutional revision either. You know, a few minutes to talk about what I'm going to try to talk about is really going to be challenging, but I ain't got a board, all right? Because those of that know me, the council, I work for anybody else, I have a plan already. And it's a plan that we all need to share, and I think you're going to buy into it when I explain what this plan involves. But let me talk about why we need a plan, why we need a reform. And I already mentioned that early, earlier. Too much power in the hands of a few. It was just alluded to. We have a system of government that is sick. It has evolved since the 1930s, Indian Reorganization Act. Because at that point in time, somebody thought it was important that we corporations instead of regular governments with separation of power and all the other protections that our, our government has. And so that passed all through the years and now we end up in a situation where we got all the abuses going on. Now unlike some of the candidates or some like other people who are out and about, they're going to throw around terms like separation of power. Ah. <laughs> separation of power. Hey, you know. Sure. Talk about checks and balances, but the reality is we're handing out to you now. Take a look on your table. Here's why we have to change it. We're going to hand this out, it'll come to you. Here's why we've got to change it, and here's how I propose to change it. We're going to have three, bear with me, two, three, executives. That's what we need to have to run the day to day business. A chair, a treasurer, a secretary, just like Spirit Lake. We're going to have two from each district, all the way around, six districts, that's 12. And then if we let six at large like they do at Standing Rock, we will now move to 18. With the three executives, that's 21. Now somebody right away would say, well gee, you'll just double the cost of government. They already spend too much money. No, this will cost less. You want to know why? Because all the 18 that sit on the outside are not going to be full-time councilmen making 130, 140,000, 160,000 a year. They're going to get a stipend, a stipend. And then that's that. Okay? It will be a stipend. Every year. Yep. And so, we're also going to put into place reform, excuse me, put into a, a term limits, two term maximum, two consecutive terms. That way we can't have to have abuse go on and on and volume your way back into the dollars. Two term limit. You're done after two. President of the United States can't go beyond two. Why should uh, the chairman of FIFA, Charles Manda, and Johnson Rick Rock go beyond two? <laughs> So, with that, we've got a definite model for, for trying to fix this, and I appreciate your time. Take a look on the table. That's what we're suggesting. Thank you. I think we have to ask ourselves, what has been done? That's why I guess I, when I introduced myself, we talked about action, not words. I mean, I think the talking's got to quit at some point. And you got to put your words into action. I know we've had a lot of uh, talented professionals enrolled members of our tribe worked on our constitution for two and a half years. Really dedicated themselves, committed themselves, but yet that document is collecting dust as it's They were saying, well, that's the other side's constitution. That's the tribal council's constitution. I really, I really believe that uh, Ed Hall's MHA tomorrow, which is where he's going to the communities and giving you guys input you guys have to have input. So it becomes the people's constitution and nobody else's. You take ownership of it. It becomes your constitution. And there, there needs to be a... Can you guys hear me back there? I know it's kind of... Okay. Uh, there, of course, policies and structure. And they need to be enforced. And we talked about this uh, a few weeks ago. Our, we cannot skirt away from who we are as a people. 
So our culture needs to be implemented into this Constitution, as well as our code of ethics. We can never skirt away of who we are as a people. We can never skirt away from that. So our culture has to be a part of this document of who we are. And so I'm a firm believer that we need Constitution revision. I think the last few uh, administrations Italian you exploit from the weaknesses in it. It's pretty big, and it's up for interpretation. It's a matter of who interprets it. It's who interprets it. But I believe that we need a new constitution. Thank you very much. <clears throat> um, just a short little recap. 2006, November, I... Um, was chairman of the tribe and went to all the communities of uh, the reservation, the, the districts, the segments. We call them different things, but mainly it's all of our six hilltops that we were forced to live on after they flooded us with the creation of the dam and Lake Sapakawea. And then I came out to Bismarck. I came out and listened to you. I went to Fargo. I went to Minneapolis. I went to Williston. And I asked, our people, what do you think of the revision? Do you want me to be the only one in office for nine months? And all seven of us for, or I guess to depend on the proportion of the number of the council at that point, for three months. And everyone said no. They didn't like that portion of the revision because it was gonna send their representatives home for nine months of the year. And it would just be one member, which would have been the chairman, running the day-to-day -day of the tribe. And the people didn't want that. The other areas, I think, were worked on as a conjunctive or, or a comprehensive document. I think portions of them were fine. In 1986, I voted on one of our changes. It was a, it was a big vote that time. One of my friends spoke to me and said, we need to go vote at the Civic Center, Marcus. This is a huge issue for future leaders. You may be a leader one day, he said. I was 20 years old and I thought that was kind of uh, reaching, but lo and behold, I became our chairman. Well, that vote was to have tribal council members quantum be one half. Wow. It narrowly was defeated by five, 10, 12 votes. And that's when they restructured our, our council down to seven. The people's document is the Constitution. It's the ancestors and our predecessors who put that in place. It's an honorable document. The requirement for it, though, is you have to have honorable council members to interpret and enforce it. Are we due refer for revision? We just had one. Now, in order to be a council member, you have to be one-fourth and uh, that is what the people chose to, to vote into um, effect and it is in place today as of 2012 forward. Do we need tweaking? Do we need revisions? Yes, but it needs to come from you and each council representative will listen to you. And as a chairman, that's what I will do too is listen because that's my platform. It comes from you, the people first. Thank you. Let's get out. Like I said before, I've been an attorney for tribal councils for almost 12 years. I've heard constitutional revision, I've heard it since I was little. And I'll do respect to everyone who's been on the council or is on the council. There's one reason why a constitution isn't revised, is the council doesn't want it. Because when they realize the authority and power is taken away, and there's a change of environment that we've all grown up under, nobody wants it. Nobody really wants it. I'm an attorney, I can, I can follow the law, and I actually look forward to changing the Constitution, including real provision, not a piecemeal, but we've done it last few years. <laughs> Amendments just on enrollment. Amendments on what we call a referendum. Go back in, turn it from an outdated corporate board system to a real power where you have input. And there is something out there. We have a model we can go from. We don't have to start from scratch. But here's the thing. If you want to revise the Constitution, you got to accept one thing as a tribal council member. You're not going to be there forever. This is for the next one. Yeah. So when you're older, if you're an old man, an old man, I can say, hey, you cannot do that. Your powers as a chairman, as a council, are limited. 
There are referendum vote. There's recall provisions that are clear. They're not clear right now. Anyone, as all your children go up in school, they're going to learn the, that civics class, what the three branches of government are. And if we can shape our constitution more to that, more will people really understand while still taking our culture, our people, back into that document. Then our next generation, our children, our grandchildren, will not have this fight now. Politics will always be there, but the playing field will be level, and it won't be just in seven hands. Thank you.